Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Thursday, February the 1st, 2024. Thursday, February 1st, already one month in the can. So please, everybody, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Let's dive right in. Um, and that is, of course, Trina. Uh, everybody got there. Uh, Trina was in the, the stateroom when her parents came in. Because I think, you know what, did they just not show something? Because I never saw anybody get on the boat and get to Trina. It seems like there was a whole scene missing. I don't know, everybody. Did I miss something? So let me know. I did have to watch this episode. Uh, you know how people, YouTubers, they play the the full episode, although guess what? It was only 15 minutes of the ep episode or actually a half hour of the episode. It wasn't the full episode because uh, I'm going out of town, y'all, so there probably won't be one tomorrow. Just heads up. Heads up, no complaining. <laughs> so I had to watch a YouTubers and, you know, you get an eye here, a wall there, distorted audio. You know, these were the only two pictures I dared to try to get. Um, but I thought, am I missing something? Who was the first on the boat, right? Did Laura speak to Trina first? I mean, that did not show. So you uh, Daily Recap fans, let me know. Type it if something else that I missed, okay? But Portia's there comforting her daughter. Curtis comes wheeling in. Um, and, you know, Dante's in and out, giving minor updates, you know. Of course, we all knew it. No bodies were found. And the closer they get to the channel, the currents are stronger, and they feel the bodies would be swept out. So by the end of the show, Dante said it's more of a, a recovery mission, not a rescue. Trina's distraught. No, I know he's still alive. No, I know he's still alive. And Laura's just, she's crying because that's her grandson, you know? And so Trina ends up wanting to just stand on the, what do you call it, deck? And she's just looking out at the water, saying, Spencer, how do I do this? Because she don't want to leave. And her mother's like, we have to go. You know, they can't keep the boat here, right? We've got all kind of agencies looking for, for Esme and Spencer. And Trina, honey, we got to go. And she's like, I can't leave him. I can't leave him. But, you know, unfortunately, she's going to have to leave him. So um, we shall see. We all know. We know he's not gone. We just know he's away right now. And at the very, very end, I did see his little white dove was laying on ground. On, on So whatever island, uh, you know, part of a beach, part of a cove, wherever that dove is at, that's where Spencer ended up on shore. Now, I was looking at Comic Corner. Some people think Esme drug him there. She could have. She could have uh, kept him from drowning because Spencer, she drugged him. So she probably had to be the one to save him because she wasn't drugged. And look, she ain't no stranger to water, the little mermaid. So, you know, and this time she didn't have to fall from no parapet. She just going overboard. So she was right in her element with that. You know, and knowing Esme, there was a boat somewhere on the side that she, you know, who, who knows what they're going to do four months from now. So anyway, that's all she wrote with that. And that's that storyline. Now, they wasted a whole lot of time with Lois trying to plant this God awful wedding. Gotti, just things that she was talking about. There was no way as as my daughter, as a daughter, I would even allow because Brooklyn's like, you know, it's my mom's turn to, it's, I guess, tradition. It's my mom's turn to plan a wedding. And I was thinking, uh, no, it's your turn to plan a wedding. Because Lois planned her wedding, right? Even though they talk about the neighborhoods involved and the whole family, the, that wedding was the way Lois wanted that wedding to be. So this is Brooklyn's wedding. It should be the way she and Chase want it to be. 
And so as she's saying all this, Tracy comes in and Tracy's listening to it all. And, you know, Tracy wanted to immediately veto and give the ax to that. But she, it played in her mind what Gregory told her. Enough. I don't want you arguing with Lois. I don't want you causing a mess, a ruckus. I don't want you making this all about you. This is for Brooklyn. So Tracy says, and so uh, uh, Lois says, and how do you feel about that, Tracy? Because she knew Tracy was going to object. And Tracy says, that's what you want? I wholeheartedly agree. And Brooklyn and Chase were like, wait, what? And Lois was like, uh-huh. I never thought I'd see the day. And then she got cornier and cornier. And I think she got cornier and cornier on purpose, right? Um, but Brooklyn wanted to speak. Brooklyn and Chase wanted to speak to Tracy. So Gregory and Lois leave. And Brooklyn told Tracy, Grandmother, what were you thinking? And Tracy's like, what? She goes, we wanted you to say no. <laughs> they didn't want none of that. So Tracy's like, wait, you wanted me to say, she says, well, why would I have to say no? Why can't you tell your mother that that's not the kind of wedding you want? So Brooklyn was like, and then she, that's when she went into the whole tradition. And now this is my ma's turn to plan a wedding and yada, yada, yada. And so Tracy says, and she says, but this, Jason, I don't want that. We met here. We want to get married here. We want to have the wedding where we want to have it. We want to have the reception in a place that's special to us as well. So Tracy's like, well, you still need to talk to your mother because you should have the wedding you want. Okay. So Lois comes in and, and Brooklyn ends up telling her because first Lois is still go. Now she were real gaudy with it. And so Tracy, I think Brooklyn said something to the effect of, hmm, sounds just like a number of weddings I've been to. And she's looking at Lois, at one in particular. And Lois stops and she goes, okay, the plans are just a little like my wedding. And so Brooklyn's like, a little. She says, okay, it's exactly like my wedding. And then Brooklyn said, and she started naming other, you know, couples that got married this year. And she said, and the blah, blah, blahs and the blah, blah, blahs and the blah. She goes, my, don't get me wrong. Those weddings were fun. She said, but they were all alike. We don't want that. And so Lois just looked at her. And of course, Lois, Lois ended up saying, Brookie, it's, it, this is your day. You can have the wedding you want, which we knew that was going to happen, right? We knew that was going to happen. So we have uh, Drew pumping up Carly because Carly was nervous. And she's like, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I got a lot to do, a lot to learn. He goes, and you just the professional one to do it, you know? And so Michael comes in. And he says, congratulations, mom. He was on board, you know, congratulations. And so she goes, thank you, Michael. Thank you. She goes, I got a lot to do, a lot to learn. She said, listen, I have to get to the hospital to support your sister, Jocelyn. You know, her friend Adam has some decisions to make. She goes, and I got to be there for Jocelyn. So she gives Drew a, a hug and a kiss and she whispers in his ear, go easy on him. <laughs> right? See, that's Carly's son. So Drew and Michael talking and, and Michael says, listen, Drew. I came here to turn in my letter of resignation and he pulls it out of his pocket and Drew looks at him like, wait, what? You know, because after Drew hashed over, still, why couldn't you tell me why? And so Michael said, I already said it, but this is what happened. Michael went through it again. He says, but I do understand that this has caused a problem between you and I. And that's why I'm giving my letter of resignation. And Drew is like, just because we're having a problem, that doesn't mean you need to resign, right? And Michael says, well, case in point, you hired a brand new editor in chief, chief of Crimson, without even consulting me first. 
So Drew says, oh, oh, you mean like you held information on who, who told the SEC without consulting me first? And Michael said, yeah, but you see, this is why, you know, I, I'm resigning because obviously, you know, you don't trust me and I understand that, Drew. I understand. But Michael's thinking, I got options. I'll just slide right back over to ELQ. <laughs> Look, he he never without a job, right? Even if he got to create one, he's never created one yet. So um, anyway, Drew says, listen, I don't want you to resign. And he goes, are you saying you don't want your mother and Nina out and your mother in? He goes, no, I don't have a problem with that. He said, but I've been running Aurora solo for a long time. And it's been doing very well. So I at least deserve the courtesy of a conversation, which he did. So Drew lets him know, bottom line, you work for me. <laughs> you know, Drew tears up the resignation letter, tells him, I expect you at your desk tomorrow. Uh, talking to him really like an employee or employee. But he says, no, Michael. He says, look, I am going to be, you know, you think what I've done right here to Nina is all I'm going to do? He goes, oh, no, 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 no. I'm, there's so much I'm going to do to her. I'm going to bleed her dry. I mean, he just went on and on. And Michael's just looking like, who am I talking to? Right? And so he goes, and I want you, you know, you and I can take Nina down together. So Michael says, well, you know what, Drew? I'm going to have to respectfully decline on that. And Drew says, wait, what do you mean respectfully decline on that? He goes, after everything Nina has done to your family, he says, uh, yeah. He says, and my reactions and actions to, to Nina is what, me, what has me on the verge of losing my family. He says, I am doing everything I can to make it up to Willow everything I can he says and if I go in on you with you on this revenge plot he goes oh no I might as well pretty much kiss my family goodbye he says and I'm not gonna do that so like I said before I'll resign and so Drew says look Michael that's exactly what I want to hear and he says, what are you talking about? Was this some kind of test? He said, yeah, a test on, are you going to be honest with me? Honesty. See, you weren't honest with me when you found out that information, right? You're honestly telling me what you're not going to do and why. He goes, I respect that. He said, because see, I'm still going to do what I'm, I'm going to do. I don't need you to do it with me. You know, so that's what he said. I'll see you tomorrow at your desk, right? Or in your office. So anyway, that was that was them. And Adam's father. Okay, that man is a piece of work. He is 100% a piece of work. Um, Willow brings in Adam's guitar and he lit up. Oh, he's... She goes, I was wondering what happened to it. She goes, no, we kept it safe while we transferred you to another room. And here it is. And he goes, oh, she goes, and you know, Jocelyn was the one that, that brought it from the park the, the night you were admitted. She's the reason why you have it today. And so, because, you know, he's still kind of Jocelyn, whatever, Adam, you alive. So, um. Outside, Felicia's talking to Jocelyn, saying she's going to be Adam's patient advocate. And Jocelyn's like, oh, good, because, you know, he is going to need, you know, someone to help him navigate this and let him know what his rights are. And Felicia goes, no, I'm going to, I'm going to be it. So Adam's father, as Willow is in there, walks in and looks and he goes, hi, Adam. And he looks at the guitar. I thought you had outgrown that nonsense. And Adam just looks at him. You know, now see, we get the panic. And 
And he's just looking at her. And so Willow looks at him like, wait, what? And so he goes, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this one. And he goes over to the bed and he's trying to snatch the guitar out of Adam's hand. Adam is holding, you know, hang, holding on to it. And Willow says, excuse me. You, uh, uh, you are upsetting the patient and you're going to have to leave. He goes, this patient is my son. And, and so he said something is he's still trying to pull on the guitar and Adam is, and then Adam's hanging on to it like, no. and Jocelyn comes in, leave Adam alone. Okay, there you go. And he goes, you, you, nurse, I told you that this young lady is not allowed in my son's room at all. Call security and get her out. And Willow's just looking at him. And so Carly comes in and Carly says, you won't do no such thing. Instead of raising your voice at my daughter or yelling whatever she said, yelling at my daughter, you ought to be thanking her for saving your son's life. And so um, he looks, he goes, and who are you? And she goes, I'm Jocelyn's mother. And he's like, oh, oh, of course, of course, right? And so Felicia says, listen, Mr. Whatever their last name is, I'm Felicia Jones. I work for the hospital. I'm a patient advocate. And I'm here to speak to your son, Adam. My son, Adam, does not need a patient advocate. My son, Adam, is coming home with me. And so he says, um, so Adam's just sitting there. Felicia says, uh, yet even so, I'm going to need all of you to leave the room. It's up to Adam if he wants to talk to me or not. So the father looked at Adam. Adam, tell her you don't need a patient. And he goes, I would like to speak to the patient advocate. <laughs> and his father looked at him. So now all of them are leaving and they're in the hall and Ad, Felicia's telling Ab, Adam that they can, there's resources and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and just, you know, being in, telling them, giving them options, right? So another scene, Adam comes out, he's already dressed. The father's like, good, good, you dress. Now let's go. You know, we'll give you a couple of, a couple of weeks to get all this out of your system. And then we're going to get you right back into, you know, we'll get you into a school near home and get you on the right direction. And Adam says, I'm not going home with you. And his father says, wait, what? He says, I'm not going home with you. He says, and what do you think you're going to do? He said, I'm going to go back to PCU. And his father said, who do you think is going to pay for that? Adam says, uh, I will get a job and I will put myself through school. And Felicia goes, PCU has a phenomenal music program. And a student with Adam's talent, they will have something for him. And his father looks at him. And so Adam says, Dad, I have your number. And you have my number. He said, if you ever want to talk to me, you can call me. But I'm going to take care of myself. How much you want to bet he's going to go home to Jocelyn, in Jocelyn's house? Even though Jocelyn is still living in the dorm. Because now his whole financial aid situation, because it was paid for by his parents. You know, he's going to have to get financial aid and look. The way financial aid works, if you don't apply during the open period, you ain't getting it <laughs> at all. So anyway, we'll deal with the, see how the Adam situation goes. And Jocelyn was so proud that he stood up to his father, you know, and, and made that choice. Um, I think that was the last day that we're going to see that particular actress playing Jocelyn because Eden McCoy, I think I saw it in scenes. She's on tomorrow, so she's back, which is good. I actually missed her. Now, this Jocelyn, to me, she wasn't too bad. But if you just notice, she and Dex weren't together hardly at all. And there were definitely no love scenes and no real kissing. 
That was interesting to me. So anyway, that is it. That's it for uh, the daily recap on GH. I'm not going to be able to do Comment Corner, Comment Corner uh, tonight because uh, I'm getting ready to head to the airport to get on a plane in less than an hour. So I just wanted to make sure I was able to do this recap before I left. Um, please, everybody, read the recap. I mean, read the comments. Comment on other people's comments. Let's keep the conversation going because we do so well in comment corner on that. So I will be back with another daily recap of General Hospital.